Yeah, uh, this is at the Stockholm World Water Cube 2010, and we have Mike Kang with us this morning. Mike, for the for the intro introductions, can you just put up your bag, please? Sure. Yes. Can you tell us what Mike Kang does. Uh, so I am the co-director of the Engineers Without Borders Water Sanitation Program in Malawi. Uh, we work with uh, local governments to basically enhance their capacity for service delivery and try to uh, find the right management business models that actually get water infrastructure sustainably in the ground because right now that's that's a challenge. Uh, how big is the challenge that you're talking about? Yeah, it's a big challenge. I mean, the, the water sector um, in Malawi has put, I don't know the exact number, but some numbers of, of, of tens of millions of dollars over the last uh, years into... Uh, new infrastructure. And new infrastructure is fine, of course, you need to increase the coverage, except if you're not actually thinking about that as a sustainable service that's going to have, you know, institutions who can support it in the long run, that sustainability, you have big challenges. So that's why the, the functionality rates in Malawi, you have 30% of, of your water points at any given time broken, and uh, there's no one really solving that problem right now in a meaningful way, so we're trying to basically fill that, fill that gap and work with other partners who are interested. Uh, who's your partner there on this? Your prime partner? We work mainly with uh, with WaterAid, uh, okay. Malawi, UNICEF, mm -hmm. um, but our, our main partners are actually the districts, uh, the, the local government institutions themselves. There are 28, we're working with 17 of them, okay. um, but while we're doing that, we need to have those national level connections. WaterAid, UNICEF, the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Development. Okay, you have uh, a formal engagement with all of them? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Okay, and uh, back to, again, uh, just going back a couple of years ago or five or ten years ago. Sure. Uh, why did you come into the sector? I came to Malawi because um, I basically had this impression that there was this global injustice that was taking place and that was um, uh, that was this, the, the, the slow development that's, that's happened over the last 60 years since the whole development system was kind of invented. Um, I don't know, I just felt like uh, the experiences and the the, uh, the skills that I'd been really privileged to gain uh, in Canada um, and had previously put towards you know optics research could be better directed towards solving some of these really complex problems. And I've actually become more passionate about it since being in Malawi because I've seen how challenging those problems are to solve. Mm -hmm. You have incentives problems, you've got the fact that the whole system and the money is um, you know, is accountable to the to the donors, but the real the beneficiaries are not the ones who are actually the ones who are able to hold the implementers accountable. That's a really frustrating problem, but that's actually the reason that I'm passionate about solving it because it's it's hard and it's important. When uh, when do you think you'll see the light of the day? <laughs> I don't I don't know that. Uh, I think the the vision of seeing the light of day and everything everything uh, working well isn't one that's that's useful. Um, I get, I think I get uh, fired up and I get passionate about being able to solve small problems using small incremental changes that have big impact. And I think that the time scale of those types of changes, for example, changing the way the water sector um, delivers services to communities in Malawi, uh, can be on, on the order of three, five years. Um, it, it really depends on a lot of different factors, but I think focused efforts in, in, in a time frame like that can have a really big impact on, on water service delivery. Okay, before we sign up, uh, one message. Okay. Sorry? One message from you? One message. Yeah. What do you think people should focus on? One issue. I think one, the, the biggest issue that I would like everyone to think about and focus on is if you're going to put a lot of money, money behind something, make sure you put the time, invest the time and energy into th understanding what's there first. You can think about what's needed and that's great. But if you don't, if you're not really understanding what's already there, the path in between, which is your project, is going to make a lot of assumptions you're not aware of. And I've seen that happen again and again. So please, don't just do a baseline ass assessment with a two-week consultant. Go there, get the situation, understand the people, understand their challenges, and then design what you want to do about it. Great. Uh, all the best from the WaterCube team. Thank you. And looking forward to meet you again. Yeah, you as well. Thanks.